Sorry, Ed Burnt, very lovely to meet you. Thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> it's your first time uh, at the Godless shows. And yes. I believe you came to see it last year, did you? I did, yeah. Uh, Robin had asked me to do it last year, and I didn't feel the equal to the task. I thought, you know, it all sounds like the people you've got on the bill are all generally quite intellectual uh, compared to me, and I don't really have much stuff that I think would fit. I had, like, one routine back then that I had done at various charity events to do with... The, the God Hates Fags organisation, um, but I'd done that to death and I think anyone who wanted to had seen it, so I just didn't really have anything. And then I just thought I'd come along to watch the show, I was out with Darrow Breen one night and he was coming and doing it, and um, it just got my cogs whirring and got me thinking about stuff and I thought, I thought to myself, I am coming back here next year, because I am a nerd, I'm into science, I'm into science fiction, and I'm an atheist and all this sort of stuff, so I fit the bill. And I'm going, I'm going to write some stuff that's going to go well at that show. And, and what, I did. What and I came back and it worked. <laughs> they did love you. That is true. Um, I didn't say that. You make it sound like I just said and they loved me. <laughs> you said they did love you. That is true. The, I didn't say that. There, there was a subtext there. We, you, you and I both <laughs> I'm know. Pleased, I'm pleased that it went good. <laughs> uh, what kind of stuff were you talking about then what, that would be different from your usual kind of affair? Um, well, like that's the thing that I did tonight about. I did the thing tonight about watching uh, Brian Cox's Wonders of the Solar System, and I had been doing that on tour, and I just dropped it because it just wasn't working. Right. And then that was the bit that tonight worked better than any of the other bits I did. So that's a, a, a great example. Uh, the stuff about I did some stuff about meeting some guys who worked at CERN, and just about being a nerd, and also then I had something about meeting an actor from from Star Trek, uh, and. It all just worked nicely. But it's weird, some of it then, some of it actually, of the nerdier stuff, gets bigger laughs in front of audiences that aren't into that sort of stuff. Like, uh, you know, some of the more nerdy references to do with science fiction, for instance, to do with Star Trek, actually work better in front of audiences who don't really know what I'm talking about. Just kind of go, hmm, huh? this guy's a nerd. <laughs> Whereas here, it was like, they're more like, yes, we knew that of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so what, what kind of exciting things are happening for you? I believe you're going to be... Um, uh, Putting on your dancing shoes? Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing uh, Let's Dance for Comic Relief in uh, February, which that should be fun. My um, wife and I are having our first baby <gasps> in a couple of weeks. Congratulations! So that's quite exciting. That's brilliant. Uh, and then I'm going back on. I'm going on tour starting in March, all around the UK. Fantastic. Well, I you know I like the, the, the I, I I call it Christmas. I I'm not into the idea of we have to be politically correct and say season's greetings or anything like that, but I also believe that the the notion of the Christ being taken out of Christmas is a slight exaggeration on the part of some people who are more interested in selling newspapers. So I'm not worried about the debate that rears its head every Christmas about the Christ being taken out of it. Uh, and I completely sympathise with religious people who feel that the true meaning of Christmas has been lost. I think that, you know, Christmas, even as a, as a, uh, as an atheist, I don't like Christmas being overly commercialised and I don't like to see Christmas ads in September and Tesco's selling Christmas puddings in September, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff annoys me anyway. So I completely sympathise with religious people who feel that, that, that we're not being observant enough of that. But um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a marvellous excuse for an end-of-year hoolie. But it's like anything. It's like anything in life that religion has hijacked. You know, um, getting married, having a baby, dying, uh, having a festival at the end of the year where people, you know, have parties and exchange gifts, all this sort of stuff. It's, it's all part of culture. You know, marking the seasons, marking time going by, things like that. And, you know, these are, these are things that we as social beings wish to do anyway. And religions hijack these things and say, well, we have to get our children christened, well, we have to get married in a church, well, you know, all this sort of stuff. And we have to, at, at our end of year festival, we will celebrate the birth of the Messiah, you know. Uh, and I think that we just all just like to, to do these things anyway. Which is why I didn't get married in a church and won't have a funeral in one and uh, and will be enjoying my end of year festival. What will you be doing on Christmas Day? 
Well, actually, I won't be doing anything because my wife will be, you know, three days off of giving birth by then. We'll just be sitting there looking at our belly going, come on! <laughs> I would make, you know, allusions to the Virgin Mary, but that would be <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, very happy. It would be funny, yes, if, if we went and just camped in the shed just to, be, just to make it really Christmassy. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Thanks a million, Ed. Happy Christmas and best of luck with the baby. Congratulations.